Hello. <laughs> hey, Ashley. How are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? I think we're live, so I better just welcome everybody to uh, this Canfar Instagram live feed, which is awesome that we can do this. I'm Valerie Pringle. I'm a Canfar spokesperson for lo these many decades, and really delighted to see again the wonderful Ashley Rose Murphy, who's been involved with Canfar for a very long time as a youth ambassador, as an educator, and is just quite a remarkable woman. If you do not know this, you will know this in the next 20 minutes. And um, I'll just start, Ashley, by saying the very first time I heard you speak was at a Canfar uh, luncheon fundraiser called Can You Do Lunch? And I remember, you know, you got up on the podium. People can't see, but you're the most petite, perfect, exquisite creature. Um, not to focus on that, but you are. And you started to tell your story. So if we could just begin there, because it, you know, it's a remarkable and powerful one of you born with HIV, uh, this, you know, little babe and your journey from there. Well, thank you so much. I, I honestly, I do remember quite vividly the moment we first met, you know, getting up on stage and seeing everyone. I, I remember picking you out from the crowd for sure. <laughs> and then since then we've had such a good relationship, but I guess, how, how would I start? Well, like you said, I was born with HIV, uh, born in 1998 to a mother who was an addict and an alcoholic. And although she did love and care for me, her addictions made it almost um, impossible for her to be able to care for me the way that she really needed to. And so I was placed with the foster family for the first few weeks of my life. And even and, and though just I- to point out, I mean, not to interrupt you, they did no doctors, no one expected your life to be very long at all. And you were placed with a foster family, essentially to have someone who would hold you at least for the, for the short life that you were expected to have. Basically, but the, the thing was that these foster parents, when I was first placed with them, they didn't know I had HIV at all. And, you know, they soon come to, like, find out when I go to a visit one day at the Children's Aid Office with to see my mom, and I go into cardiac arrest. And I get rushed down to sick kids. I'm only about a few weeks at this point, like a few weeks old. I'm still a newborn, very much so little. And I get rushed down to sick kids. Uh, you know, the doctors take one look at me. Like, they know, obviously, I'm not okay. I'm not breathing on my own. They do a blood test on both me and my birth mother. And uh, both tests came back that we had full-blown AIDS. And I was at this point, my birth mother, she, she wasn't sure if she had HIV. She had a reservation. She knew that she had, at one point, had sex with a man who had HIV. But she always, you know, lived in denial. And so she never got tested. And that was the first time she got tested and, you know, came back full-blown AIDS. And because the doctors also saw uh, pneumonia in my lungs, which looked like pneumonia that's seen in those with compromised immune systems, they decided to put me on a ventilator in a comatose state that I stayed in for three and a half months until I finally got awoken and I was out of that state. And then Children's Day started looking for a foster family that would take me because that foster family that I was with previously, when they found out that I had HIV, they wanted absolutely nothing to do with me. And you know, this is in 1998, very long time ago. Uh, the first antiretroviral came out only in 1996. So I always say to people, I was incredibly lucky to be born at the time I was, at the time of, you know, such medical advancements, even though, you know, we've come such a far away since then. But, you know, over 200 phone calls and rejections, and the first person to actually say yes was my mother, Carrie. And, you know, you've met her. She's a spectacular She's... person. You're a spectacular family. I mean, you were sure lucky to no, I Murphy's. I won the lottery with my family. I mean, I, I was walking with such loving arms. And even though the doctors, you know, they, they told my mom when she, come to, when she came to pick me up that day, you know, she, this girl's only got about a month to live. And I was six months old at that point. But my mom, she's a very, like, strong woman and a strong woman of faith. And she knew that, you know, with love and care and support, I'd be able to overcome. And that's exactly what I did. She, she knew what was in store for me before I even knew it. It was, I mean, I was very sick as a kid. At five years old, I only weighed 25 pounds. 
And so I had to get a gastrointestinal tube and put into my stomach because I wasn't able to take medication orally. And I was just, I was very sick. I was very sick for almost, I want to say the first 10 to 12 years of my life, I was quite sick. But despite that, I still wanted to share my story. When I was seven, I was told that I was HIV positive. Before then, I didn't really know. I didn't, I didn't know what that meant. I just thought, you know, doesn't every kid go to sick kids, you know, quite often? You know, every couple months I was going. That was, that was my normal. That's what I thought every kid did. And then when my parents sat me down, they're like, you know, Ashley, this is very serious. And you can't tell anybody because of it. And my parents, they always told me, you know, never tell a lie. Never shy away from the truth. And I felt like at that moment I was, I was hiding something. And it was such a big part of my life, at least that I thought as a kid, because I really didn't know anything about HIV. But it was through me telling my story just to really anyone who would hear it. On the playground, I'd say to like one of my peers, hi, like, did you know I have HIV? And it would just be as simple as that, because I, I wasn't really afraid to tell anybody. And I think that was kind of the beauty of the innocence of a child, because I was so innocent, I didn't care. So, but, you know, so tell me about <clears throat> stigma, because you had this sense, a message, be careful who you tell, you know, some parents, other kids might not be comfortable with it. You've grown up with this. This is now years since. Tell me about that stigma and, and telling people, yes, I'm HIV positive. I mean, it definitely came at, at a cost. Uh, I realized very early on at a very early age that stigma is prevalent. And it, it, it took me a while to kind of, you know, understand why that is. And then, I, you know, it all boils down to lack of education and ignorance. And so as my mom has always said, and I've kept near and dear to my heart, you, you know, you got to kill them with kindness. And I first, I first got like, my first taste of stigma when I went to HIV summer camp. And it was for kids who were either infected or affected by HIV. And this was the first time I had met a community of people who were very similar to me. But I had also realized that stigma was really prevalent within their lives. And I had had it happen a bit to me and we connected through this but I didn't realize to the severity at some point. Because for me, I, I grew up with it. It was kind of something normal for me. I, I brushed it off, it was whatever. Um, parents coming to tell my principal that they didn't want me to be at my school because of my HIV status. Mm. Like these were things that I kind of was aware about, but because I was young, my parents tried to shelter me from it as well. And what, what difference have you seen? Because I mean, you've been talking about this, you've spoken to you know, sports arenas full of people about this. And you're now, how old are you now, Ashley? I'll be 23 on Saturday, actually. Ah, well, happy birthday. Thank um, you. But uh, tell me about now, then and now, a little bit about, about stigma. Because well, I, I think I then, sort of go like, isn't that gone now? See, I think that's what people, that, that's what people first assume because, you know, it's not the 80s anymore. We're not like talking about HIV a lot. It's not in the news a lot. And so because of that, I think people tend to believe, you know, you know, you don't hear anything, you don't see anything, it must not exist. It's just, it again, it's just blatant ignorance. But now when you have, you know, social media thrown into the mix, because when I first started, I was 10. And you know, it, what was that? Early 2010s, science and technology. Like they were advanced, but they're not as advanced as they are, you know, as of right now, where it's so easy to go behind a computer screen and say really hurtful things. I mean, I've had that happen to me numerous amounts of times. Um, one day, I, one particular thing I can recall was I was giving a radio interview that was being stationed in New York. I was in Vancouver at the time. And I was giving this interview, just answering questions, being very honest, very open. And before I even got off, I could see that people were mentioning me on Twitter. I was like, oh, what's this about? And it was all just very negative stuff. Being like, your birth mother, she's disgusting because she had it. And then you're disgusting because you got it from her. And just all these hateful things. And it really, it, it, it did hurt me a little bit. But then I realized that's coming from a place of lack of education and ignorance. Yeah. And yeah. that really, that really starts, you know, in the home and, yeah. and in the heart because, you know, no one's born to hate. No, something you know, that we learn. 
if you, you know, fear and ignorance, I mean, for sure, for AIDS, you know, mental illness, there, there are lots of things that, you know, that combination is lethal and potent. If you're afraid and you're ignorant, then, then you react and you react badly. I want to ask you, Ashley, because I mean, it's a concern, certainly, and, and CANFAR is trying to make people aware of this, that uh, new infection rates among women um, are highest in the age group 25 to 34. You know, your you know, virtually this generation was called Generation Z, I guess. Um, how do you connect with that group? And sort of, you know, a lot of people do have the misapprehension that AIDS is, you know, not a problem. It's a, you know, manageable disease. It's not curable, but it's manageable. Um, how do you communicate with that group, sort of if your peers, and say, be aware, be careful, be safe. I mean, that, that's, that's basically what I, what I do say is, you know, you, I mean, first of all, education is the super most important key to this. Because if you don't educate yourself, then how are you going to know anything about HIV AIDS? And growing up for me in particular, I grew up in the Catholic system. And so HIV was a super taboo topic. And I tell people, had I not been born with HIV, I don't know how much I would have learned. I genuinely don't. And that's scary to me. And so I say for people that are willing to learn and willing to listen, you know, do your research, get tested, know your status, even if you don't think you have it. It's just, you know, taking care of your mental health and your sexual health is so much more important than people realize. And I think those two really go hand in hand. You can you kind of can't have one without the other. So I think just, you know, being aware that, you know, even though this isn't like the 80s, HIV, it's not an epidemic anymore. But at the same time, people, you know, there's still thousands of babies being born with HIV every single day. Well, and that's something we need to take into account that it's still prevalent. But at the same time, because of research and medicine, people are able to live full, healthy lives. Whereas like for me, I was given a month to live. And now I'm 23. Or about well, to be, I, was, I should say. I know. It's so, you know, your story is so inspiring. And, you know, we should say Canada does not have a great record on this. And I will say that bluntly. You know, we don't have a national aid strategy. Our government has not been proactive on that. Um, CANFAR, among others, but CANFAR pushed and pushed for to bring HIV testing kits into this country. We were like the 50th country in the world to have them. So people, you know, as you say, can know their status. If you know your status, um, and you can do that in the privacy of your own home, and then you can deal with it, and you can get treatment and, and get your viral load down to undetectable. The goal, obviously, is to end HIV infections. It's, it's within reach. It's possible if people act upon it. So, you know, again, getting back to your role in education, you know, what do you, when you talk to people, what do you say are the, the common myths and how do you get it through people's heads that this, you know, is not something not to worry about? Well, I mean, I've definitely been, been speaking for about 13 years now. And so I've definitely heard, you know, everything. Um, definitely when I was younger, one of the first ones I heard was you can get it by sitting on the same like, toilet seat. That's false. That cannot happen. Uh, sharing utensils, plates, cups, all that sort of thing. Absolutely not. Saliva, no. Like, whereas, like, for me, as, as a kid, I was always worried, like, you know, well, one day, will I be able to get married and have kids? And will my kids be able to be HIV negative? Like, this was something that always really worried me. Because, you know, be, being a woman and being with, having HIV, I, I wondered, like, what that looked like. And as a kid, I didn't really understand. But now I know, you know, being 23 years old and being an adult, I, I know that these things are attainable. And it's through science and through research and through, through testing that everything can be accomplished. I mean, it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. Uh, but in terms of the misconceptions, I guess definitely say those are the biggest ones that I've tried to debunk because they're so silly. I know. Well, and uh, tell me, tell me a little bit about your life now. What kind of meds do you have to take? How much does it affect your life? You've have you graduated from university now, and what are you up to? How you know well, what is your just general life living with? And what do you say you're living with HIV? Yeah. 
I'd say I'm, I'm, I'm a long-term survivor of HIV. You know, a lot of people would kind of put a long-term survivor title to someone who is in their 40s, you know, someone who is older. But then they forget about the youth that, you know, I've, I've been living with this for 23 years. HIV is all I've ever known. But in terms of medications, whereas I was a child and I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't swallow pills at first, so I had to do it through a G-tube. And I did that for four years. And I still have a permanent scar in my stomach because of it. But then afterwards, I was able to actually take medication orally. Still a bunch of medications, about like six I'd have to take. And my mom, she really like cracked down the whip on me to always take it, always remember. So that now being an adult, I never forget. And, and right now I only have to take one pill, one small pill a day. And you may think it might be hard to remember, but it's like taking my vitamins, you know? Popping a vitamin in as you wake up or, you know, taking it just before you go to bed. That's what I do. That's what works for me personally. Mm -hmm. And everyone's different. But it's taken me a long time to, you know, realize what's really worked best for me. Like I've taken different medications that haven't worked that have caused, honestly, some pretty harmful side effects. I was on a medication for about six years and I developed uh, osteoporosis. Uh, my hair was thinning out. Uh, my memory wasn't as great. I, I definitely say because of it, I, I struggle from short term memory, for sure. Well, it is uh, astonishing. And <clears throat> again, to give credit to CANFAR where it's due, they've oh, been research in this country for you know almost 30 years. And you know, obviously, scientists around the world have been working on this. But I mean, to think that here you are and you can take that pill and they've figured out the meds that you're not getting horrible side effects and then and getting on with your life. So you are, I mean, I, were you studying theater and acting? I was, I am in my last month of my theater degree and then I'll be done forever. And I think that's so crazy. It's also been interesting doing school in a, in a COVID-19 world when everything is digital and online. I mean, this is the only year I thankfully have to do that, but it, it's definitely been able to, it, it, it's helped me to kind of create a schedule and make sure I stay on top of everything. So at the beginning, I feel like a lot of us kind of were like scrambling and we didn't really know what was going on. I mean, no one knew what was going on. But then, you know, once you start to really sit with it and you realize, you know, this isn't going away for a while, I have to adapt. Yeah. I find adaptability is probably something <laughs> not a lot of people have. I've, I've always learned to be adaptable to my surroundings and I think that's really benefited me, especially being in theater and, and working with other people. I work with so many different people all the time. And so you always have to know how to, you know, talk to people, work to people, adapt. And I think that those are some very like lifelong lessons to be learned for, for everyone, not even if you're just in theater. Well, but, you've learned, um, you've had to learn so many lessons, Ashley, really that you know, most of us never learn, but you know, you learned early that kind of survival, aided of course by your spectacular family and, you know, as you say, adaptability and, you know, honesty and openness. And then you've got this ability, which has been so amazing for Canfar, that you can communicate to others so well your story uh, with empathy and also to give support to to other people, but women, you know, because that's a focus right now, obviously. Um, and with those numbers increasing, we see numbers increasing in Indigenous communities across Canada and other places. And you know, we we can't um, not be vigilant about this. We can't stop talking about it, which is which is what you're so great at. Thank you. I mean, I, I've always believed in, you know, keeping the conversation going. Because once the conversation stops, you know, what is there to talk about? And I mean, we've been dealing with HIV AIDS for so long, and people don't even realize that. And that there are a lot of people not n not even just me, but other amazing HIV advocates that are doing the groundwork, and really paving the way to, you know, tell people, especially for this new generation, that HIV AIDS is prevalent. It's real. You should know about it and you should get tested. Even if you don't think you have it, it's just really as a precaution. And now with our self-testing kits, because I've, I've had quite a number of people come to me and say, you know, I, I want to get tested. Like this was, this was a, a while ago, but they wanted to get tested, but they were, they were too scared. 
And that fear came from, you know, having to go into those medical offices and doing the whole test. And it's just the whole procedure. It's very daunting. And I, I can I can understand that I can empathize with people, which is why these self testing kits, like you said, right in your own home. Game it's changer. like game such changer. a game Absolutely. changer. Then there's no, no fear, no nothing. You can just get one from the drugstore, go and do it, know your status. You can get in this country with the medicines that you say and the research that's gone on, get your viral load uh, down to undetectable and, um, and live your life, live your life like you. Anyway, I'll be thinking of you then on uh, Saturday. Happy birthday, sweet Ashley. Thank you so much. This has been such a fun morning. I'm I know. glad. It's always a pleasure to speak to you and um, keep, keep doing the work, Ashley. People need to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much. It's been so great to talk to you. It's been a while. Yeah, I know. Too long. Anyway, I'll too see long. you in camp, but this is a treat. Anyway, all right. thank you all for joining us uh, on the CANFAR Instagram site. Uh, don't forget, get tested. If you, uh, if you have any questions or concern, and um, you can get all kinds of information from the CANFAR website as well. Uh, the goal is to end HIV infections in this country, so you can join that fight, uh, which CANFAR is charging ahead and trying to lead. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.